Hey guys, this is Rob. I've been Europping in the Gratichek lab this semester working on self-assisted growth of nanowires. Nanowires are defined as having a diameter on the nanometer scale and an unbounded length. The wires we're growing in particular are interesting to us because they have a convenient bad gap of 1.4 electron volts, which is right in the visible light spectrum, and they can act as radial PN junctions, meaning that they can function, if we get it right, as really skinny, long, efficient solar cells. Traditionally, nanowires are grown using a gold nanoparticle precursor. The gold attaches to the substrate and the wires grow out from the bottom of the gold because there's less surface energy to overcome where the substrate meets the gold than anywhere else. This creates very nice uniform wires, but there's a problem. They have a piece of gold stuck to the top. These gold nanoparticles are difficult and expensive to remove while keeping the rest of the wire intact. So it would be much easier if we could just grow the wires without them. Our substrate of choice is gallium arsenate, and to get it to grow into nanowires, we're depositing droplets of gallium on the surface. These droplets play the same role as the gold nanoparticles did, and at really high temperature, nanowires form from underneath them. On the left is a tilted image of what they look like, so you can see some perspective of height. And on the right, you can see how a lucky undergrad got to measure them all by hand. Here's a top-down image of our nanowires. As you can see, they didn't grow uniformly. Some are thicker or thinner than others, and radius is one of the most important character characteristics of these wires, and so we want to be able to predict it. And here's where Mathematica comes to the rescue. It has a ton of built-in image processing functions and tools. It can calculate distances, radii, areas, etc., all right on the image itself. My first attempt to understand the radius was based more or less on the image. The bigger wires don't have a lot of neighbors, and the smaller wires certainly do. I built a function to calculate the distance between the center of a wire and the center of its nearest neighbor. When you graph this against radius, it doesn't turn out so well. The r squared value is only 0.22. Why is that? Well, if you look back at the image more closely, you can see that the nearest neighbor metric works out for some of the wires, like the one on the left but not so well for the other cases. The middle one has a neighbor close by, but it has a lot of free space in the other directions to grow from. And the case on the right is about equally constrained in all directions, although both the middle and right case would show up the same in terms of nearest neighbor. Instead of looking at just the distance, let's look at the free area around the wire. Here's a small snapshot of about 200 wires and the substrate around them that they could use to grow. I circled a few of the wires that have others seriously impinging on their space. I didn't just pick that area arbitrarily. It's given by a surface diffusion length that depends on time and temperature. It varies with the square root of the diffusivity constant and the square root of the time. The diffusivity constant depends on the temperature and the activation energy required for an atom to move in its lattice. This growth took place at 500 Celsius for five minutes, so the corresponding diffusion distance is about three microns, giving me an area of about 36 microns around each wire to look at. I divided by the area of interest, in this case 36 square microns, to normalize the free area for each wire and plotted them against the radius. The correlation is much stronger with this metric, giving me an R squared of 0.67. It's not great, but it is about three times better than the last attempt. Of course, it wouldn't really mean anything if I couldn't use it to make predictions. Although I can't easily spend lab time or money tinkering, tinkering with these parameters to test my theory, I can model it in Mathematica. Here are three different predictions based on the model. The first has the same condition that the image used for the calculations had, 500 Celsius in a five minute growth time. It has an average radius of 4.7 microns, which is approximately equal to the average radius from the actual image. The middle image shows a temperature increase uh, to 675 Celsius with the same five minute growth time and gives an average radius of 10.6 microns. The rightmost display is a simulation with parameters of 485 degrees Celsius and a four minute growth. That brings our average radius down to 0.6 microns or 600 nanometers, uh, giving us wires with a diameter of 1.2 microns, very, very close to a true nanowire with a diameter less than one micron. Although they're only a few pixels across, you can see the nanoscale wires on the model if you look really, really closely. Otherwise, you'll have to just trust me. It should be noted that this is far from a perfect model. It doesn't account for the different likelihood of nucleation uh, for the original gallium droplets at different temperatures, or how the wires will respond to extreme crowding. 
What it really needs is a slider for wire density, a way to control how many nucleation sites there are in a given area on the substrate. I would investigate increasing the aerial density at low time and temperature parameters to see how it affects the radius. Finally, I'd like to thank the Gratichek group for providing me with this opportunity for research, as well as Ray, Professor Carter, RTAs, and classmates for all the help and advice they gave this semester. Thank you.